We've been talking a lot about uranium lately, and there's good reason to uh, to be doing that. Of course, we've got our uranium report out there. And, but right now, we want to talk to a, a company that's specifically looking at a district scale project in Alaska. So that's good because it's it's American based that's going to supply the U.S. Uh, with a great team. Uh, it's got a lot of data to it. Once again, a big, big scale project. Let's get in and start talking to Rob Birmingham, who is the CEO over there, and get a sense of what they're up to and uh, the real technical uh, difference in this project compared to, say, one in the Athabasca Basin. So hello, Rob. Uh, great to, to meet you here, or e meet you. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what has been, you know, you've, you've, the stock, it's new story, but the stock has just been doing very well in a tough Canadian junior space, but in, I guess, everyone's waking up to this kind of second nuclear renaissance, and they're getting excited about uh, what uh, uranium can do, and literally, it's the science, the facts of what nuclear can do to help solve some of these uh, emissions problems. A lot to chew on, but let, tell us a little bit about Panther, uh, and then we'll jump into the property. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For us at Panther, we were looking for a unique uranium project that was in an underexplored area, and we found it in Alaska. So, you know, uranium itself is a space that we really wanted to get into. We think the long-term perspective uh, space is going to be extended for a long time because there's such need for electricity worldwide and, you know, domestically in the U.S. where where Panther is focused, uh, there's even more of a need in the fact that limitations on imports through Russia uh, and, you know, domestically next to no uranium is produced annually. So there's a big focus on that. We think we can be part of the solution here. And, uh, and that was what led uh, Panther into uh, Alaska. So just a background on the property and, and, and us as a company, we, uh, we became Panther a few months ago and we acquired the Boulder Creek project. And the reason we got this project uh, was because our head geologist had actually been a previous director of one of the operators and he was singing the graces of the project and we, we did research on it. It had a non-compliant uh, resource of a million pounds at 0.27% uh, U308, which is a substantial grade. Uh, and it had prospective areas around it too. So uh, it led us to acquire it on very good terms. The vendor that we acquired it through is actually an advisor to the company and, and very well in tune with Alaska. Uh, mining friendly state, but you need, to, you need to know the people there as well. So we have that. I think we're aligned really well to be uh, successful up in Alaska. Uh, so talking about like the previous data and previous owners that uh, have been on the property, uh, what... Uh... What can you tell us about the work that's done? What what kind of it is has it uh, shown you at this point? We we got this property from our head geologist who had intimate knowledge of it. He was a previous director of Triax Minerals, uh, which had a joint venture with Full Metal Minerals. So prior to that, it was owned by Houston uh, Oil and Minerals uh, in the late seventies, early eighties, and they're the ones that completed the non-compliant one million. Uh, pound resource at 0.27% U308. So from there, it was picked up by Full Metal and, and Triax, who uh, completed about 22 holes of drilling. And in total, there's been 74 holes drilled on the property. Uh, Triax and Full Metal were, were the ones that found the, the showing of the, of the fire weed, which, which came back with substantial results. And, uh, and that's really the history of it, which, which got us excited because, you know, not just our head geologist was a director of, of Triax, but the vendor of, of the property ever since its inception in, in the late 70s, he's an advisor to our company. So we know the project intimately and, and we're excited to, to keep moving forward on it. And that's exciting to have the, the same eyes looking at it. But once again, the techniques and the, the science has developed and the way we can evaluate properties has jumped yards and, and leaps ahead in the, in the decades that uh, the, the, the project's been worked on. Yeah, absolutely. We have a lot more information through through both parties. Uh, we have access to to the core from from both the drill camp campaigns, uh, some on site actually, just off the airstrip on our property, and and some uh, in Anchorage, Alaska. That's really well stored. So we're going to analyze that. We're going to give uh, uh, a call to all the people that have worked on the property and get as much inf information as we can, so we can really maximize where we're going to work and 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 give us the best chance of, of finding some really good results. I, I mean, this is I mean, it truly is district scale, which is which is great because hey, you got a lot of land to cover, uh, but it gives you, a, a, it's a lot of work as well to narrow down those targets. But you have these two targets that I guess that, that are you going to be focused on right now. Yeah, we have these two targets. There certainly are more on the property. Yeah. Uh, but as far as, 
you know, what we want to do. We know that we want to uh, to initially sample and, and uh, improve out the model on the, on, on the Boulder Creek portion. Uh, we, we are looking to do some infill drilling this summer, which will um, which will give us more insight into into what was done outside of uh, just the previous work. And then, yeah, we, we want to get on the, on the fireweed portion, do work there. Uh, too, which is, as, as mentioned, highly prospective. There are other uh, anomalies, especially close to the Boulder Creek portion, which we can access. So um, yeah, we're, we're going to, we have two main areas we're going to look at, but, uh, but that doesn't mean that we'll be focused uh, solely on those for the future. Yeah. And you just did a, a raise as well, I, I assume, to go towards this uh, and, and a permit. You just got the permit as well, just a couple of weeks ago. So our, our permit application went in. So just went in the permit application. Yes, th that was completed and announced. We're we're waiting for that to come back. Once that happens, we'll be able to dictate um, better timing on when we're going to start to drill. Uh, we can still get up there and do work on the property prior to that. Uh, our financing we closed two million dollars. Uh, the lion's share of that is going to be going towards actively working on the property um, and doing really what I said said, which is prove out uh, the two main areas on our project and 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 you know we want to. Give news flow and and an opportunity for all of our investors to see what we're doing, and uh, you know I think we think we can get some good results from this property. And without getting too crazy technical, because a lot of my subscribers are, aren't necessarily like they're not geologists necessarily. What would be a big standout difference between when they hear like a bath, uh, you know, uh, the, the bath Athabasca Basin compared to Alaska, and then also maybe tied into that is uh it being a u.s property maybe that has a, a significant advantage than a canadian yeah i i think it certainly does being a u.s focused company which panther is with the u.s property is, is will definitely be a benefit to us to get our story out i think if you're in the athabasca region uh, there's certainly a lot of very successful companies there but it's a story that has been told and you know uh, Alaska is is new. Uh, there, it's it's known for copper and gold exploration and and mining, uh, not uranium as much, obviously. But uh, you know, we we plan to change that. And uh, there's more relatable properties like the Colorado Plateau. There's some uranium companies there that have more of a similar deposit to our our sandstone deposit on our Boulder Creek project. But it's lower grade, and uh, you know, we we obviously need to make it compliant and, and prove it out more to see whether or not it could be economic. But uh, but I think we're down the right path. So what what's what we should be looking for in the next short term? Because I mean, like I said, you're the market's responding very well to you guys. And I don't really like talking about share price ne necessarily, except for when you, mm -hmm. you do see that the story is is grabbing hold. So people are paying attention. Um, what should someone be as putting a metric to say, all right, uh, you know, well, let's hold you to some milestones. What what should they be looking for? Yeah. So a few milestones I, I think you can you can see over the uh the summertime here. So our season goes till uh, at the latest into October. So, you know, we're a newly listed company. We acquired this asset uh, about two months ago, and we've been organizing and preparing for uh, for uh, to be active this summer. We do need to wait for our drill permits before we can give uh, give more information on, on timing as far as that goes, but we want to get on the ground. Uh, we have an airstrip on the property. We, um, we are expecting to do work as soon as we can. And outside of that, we would like to get on the property uh, later on in the summer and do drilling on the Boulder Creek portion and potentially on the fireweed portion as well. But uh, we do expect to do work on both sites. And I, I always I never forget to leave this out because people always say, well, how close are you to, you know, uh, possible employment to workers, to infrastructure, all of those wonderful things. Um, I, I see that you are pretty close. Alaska is very mining friendly. Uh, yeah. Our the way that we access the property is you fly to Anchorage, you fly to Nome, which is a very mining friendly town, and from there you can go directly to the property. There are smaller villages that are closer that have airstrips that we can utilize too. And as far as employment, we we have been in talks with a lot of uh, Alaskan based companies that that are are ready and willing to supply all the people that we need to to do our work. And you know, as far as drilling goes, we've been in conversations with uh, with with drillers that are very far down the road. We just need to get a permit so we can make uh, confirmations on those. And I mean, as far as uh, this one might be a bit more controversial, we saw the Biden administration being a little bit challenging. You know, they've they've said no to Pebble, uh, but there's a, one could argue substantial reasons, uh, you know, ecologically and whatever. But at the same time, the Biden administration is very much pro mining. They do want critical metals. They do want uh, all these. Do you find uh, that space moving into even with an election year that there there's any issues you're you're not close to Pebble so that's a great thing but do you see anything coming from from anything like that in uh, in, in the near term as being an issue at all I think the you know domestically in the U S 
it's on the forefront of, of conversation is electricity and, and and the lack of it coming from different sources and you know how are we going to power ai and and data centers and talking about small modular reactor it's it's a very big conversation piece and i think the, the key thing here is the public is talking about it and becoming more knowledgeable about the benefits of it so i th i think long term it's definitely a very strong space it's a solution to a lot of the problems on, on the electric electrical side uh, you know for us obviously we're in alaska Dem it's a domestic property in the in the U.S., I, I think just the conversation piece for us is, you know, we want to prove this out, see if it's economic. We're still a long ways away from from being a mine, so um, so you know, those may be conversations further down the road. But but as of right now, I'm, I'm very bullish on on the sector. It doesn't it doesn't hurt as well when you have the largest champions are pretty much every billionaire that you can think of that's famous yeah. out there. Whether it's <laughs> Sam Altman, it's Elon Musk, uh, Bill Gates, they all have their own nuclear projects, and they're all screaming. Uh, if they have an AI play, which pretty much all of them have as well, is we're going to need to have some sort of nuclear reactor attached to our, our 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 data storage or to our AI because we are seeing enough just from crypto how much energy was taking and just the the energy yeah. divide that we're having already. As soon as you throw in just the chat GTP, never mind all of the other millions of AI things that are going to be coming, the energy need is absolutely astronomical. I totally agree with what you're saying. I mean, it, it's it's front of mind it, it, it's it's really well connected it's um it, it makes a lot of sense as this is an alternative you know the uh, uranium and and nuclear nuclear plant plants are safe they're efficient reliable uh there's uh, there's no emissions you know for a lot of countries that need to meet these benchmarks this is the solution for them and you know there's been declarations out there to increase capacity by three times uh signed by 22 different countries led by the states and, and canada so it definitely is, is in the front of mind for for a lot of countries, and I think this is a solution. It does take quite a long time to build a, a typical uh, nuclear power plant, but these small modular reactors, there you can do them in a much shorter time period, and they and they still generate a lot of capacity of electricity. It's great to see a lot of uh, like mainstream news too, like acknowledging, like listen, this whole kind of NIMBY idea, uh, and just letting you know mining happen in 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 countries that we're not going to talk about everyone's kind of waking up to that. That shouldn't be how we do things. A, it doesn't make any sense. And that, in fact, you probably do want it in your backyard because if it's in North America, there's such strong regulations and there's so much, there's strong permitting, there's strong everything that it's going to be oversaw and it's going to be regulated properly that you can feel secure that it's done correctly and done properly. And that moving forward, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to have a big climate uh, change policy if you're not going to also do the mining part properly. So I would argue that mm -hmm. especially having a U.S. Uh, potential deposit, uh, that is key for the U.S. moving forward. And that would be on both sides of whether you're a Republican or Democrat. They both are in tune and online with that that story. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. I, I think they are in tune with it. And uh, yeah, just the realization of, of, of the value of it. Uh, making sure that it, it is a part of, of, of the U.S. and Canada. I mean, there, there are nuclear reactors through both countries, but uh, the prevalence of them, I think, will will increase worldwide. There's there's 60 nuclear uh, reactors that are currently being built, 110 plants. I think that'll expand, and, and that doesn't uh, take into fact the, the small modular reactors, which which may come as well. So, uh, yeah, there, there's there's going to be a lot more built, and these need to be done and built in a very safe way it's it's um there's there's so many re regulations and restrictions to make sure that nothing happens and it turns out to be uh, percentage wise the, the second uh the second safest energy that there is i, th I believe after hydropower so um it, it, it's extremely safe it's it's a good space to be in uh, and it's you know it's, it's a reliable energy for everybody I, I read an article that uh back in the 70s now don't quote me on this it only took a year to get a permit to get a nuclear power plant going now that if that's true like that wouldn't be the case today, but that showed like uh, like everyone on board. So it shows it can be done. So I think if everyone gets on board and yeah. they start to really learn and, and we're seeing it in, in more of the mainstream news is, listen, we're going to go nuclear. Uh, that means we have to speed up a lot of these processes. And it means, you know, you guys have to work fast as well to find these, uh, you know, be the R&D to find the fuel that uh, is going to make the, the, the world green. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, what you guys come back with 
and, and, and look forward to whatever that happens to be and however you expand it. And uh, hopefully it's open in all directions. Uh, but we're looking forward to seeing what you guys come back with as soon as possible. Yeah, we're excited to work this summer. We're, we're going to be as aggressive as we can uh, with our capital raise. The lion's share of that, as mentioned, is, is going to be going to working on the property. So uh, you can expect, expect a lot of news flow from Panther. We're going to be progressing on the project. Um, we're looking to do drilling this summertime, which will obviously be con contingent on uh, the drill permits, which we expect to get back fairly soon. And, uh, and yeah, we, we want to make a difference here for sure. Excellent. Well, Rob, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about the project. Uh, we're going to keep a, a keen eye on it, and uh, we're going to look for any news releases that come out. Thanks so much for the time, and uh, yeah, have good luck out there. We're looking forward to seeing the results. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it.